Hello everyone, my name is Dilshat Rajanov. I am a physics teacher. In this video I am going to explain about lenses and drawing ray diagrams. And this lesson is dedicated for students who take, for example, grade 9 or grade 10, who study optics. I hope you learn the concept of lenses and ray diagrams in this video. The lens is a transparent object, usually made of glass or plastic, which has curved surfaces, for example, this one and this one, or this one. But note, they have different curved surf surfaces. These kind of lenses called converging lenses, because they converge, later I will show you. This kind of lenses called diverging lenses. Or sometimes they call this is converging or convex lens. This one is diverging or concave lens. So let's have a look. Uh, if we use different types of lenses, we have convex lens. It, it's called convex because it's a convex curved surface. And, and also this kind of lens is called converging lens. Because what happens if, we, if the parallel beam of rays incident on lens, it will converge rays. As you can see, it will converge in one point that's called, it's called converging lens or convex lens. And this one also called convex lens, but difference is, as you can see, it will converge rays far distance compared to previous one. And this one, is called concave or diverging lens. Concave because it has concave surfaces, curved surfaces, and if we if the beam of parallel rays incident on lens, the rays diverge. Therefore, it's also called diverging lens. Another phenomenon which I'm going to demonstrate is let's say this is an object. I'm going to use an object. What happens? Ray, if rays coming from this object goes through the lenses and we can project the image on the screen. So let, please note that this is point going, looking, I mean, pointing upwards, arrow pointing upwards and what happens to the screen. I'm going to adjust the distance between lenses so that I, I can get the sharp image. So remember, this arrow was pointing upwards, but in this case it's pointing downwards. So this phenomenon and previous phenomenon I'm going to explain later using um, ray diagrams. We have just seen what happens when parallel beam of rays incident on this kind of lenses, convex lens or concave lens. But when we draw ray diagrams, we represent them slightly different signs. For example, for convex lens or for converging lens, we use this kind of line and arrows pointing outwards. This is convex, convex, or converging, converging lens. For this kind of lenses, concave lenses, we represent in ray diagrams by line, but arrows pointing inwards. So I hope you can you can distinguish between them because you, it, it can really resemble uh, the nature of lenses, concave or convex. This is convex lens. Convex or diverging, diverging lens. We saw what happens when parallel beam of rays incident on convex lens and con 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 concave lens. Ah, oh, sorry, this is concave lens. Concave, concave lens. Parallel beam of rays incident on convex lens 
they will be converging at some point at some point after, after passing the lens and this point is called focal point and we denote it by capital F when parallel beam of rays incident on concave or diverging lens they will diverge outwards how about the focal, focal point of diverging lens? how do we determine? we just draw a rays backwards by dotted lines at point of intersection we get another focal point actually this actually this two lenses have two focal points because let's say parallel beam of rays incident from this side to the lens they will converge here what happens if parallel, same parallel ray beam of rays incident from this side going from right hand side to the lens of course since they as long as lens is symmetrical same curvature same from both sides they will be converging at the same distance from lens this is another focal point so lenses have two focal points if lens is symmetrical the distance between lens and focal point will be the same from both sides same from both sides before starting to draw some ray diagrams we need to learn some terminology related to lenses and ray diagrams let's say this is our convex lens and when we, when we draw ray diagrams we, we should draw another line which passes which passes exactly in the middle of the lens and this line is called principal axis principal axis and of course we have two focal points if lens curvature of lens are same in both sides then distance between lens and the focal points will be same from both sides this is this are points and distance between the lens and focal point is called focal length focal length and we need to learn some rules and they actually in order to get the image of an object you we need to just at least draw two rays and there are some certain law certain rules for example first one if we have if we have convex lens and this is the principal axis and this is two focal points two focal points then object is here object is located here first ray to draw is uh, actually let me use a different color for rays so let's uh, let's say rays in red first one is you draw parallel parallel ray to principal axis parallel whichever ray is parallel to principal axis it will go through focal point after reaching the lens first second one second one here so we have convex lens two focal points so second ray if ray goes to the focal point if ray goes to focal point after reaching the lens ray will go to go parallel to principal axis so when ray is parallel to principal axis it goes through focal point when ray goes through focal point then it goes to parallel to principal axis and last one last one number three two focal points if object is located here another ray possible ray so you you draw ray so that it goes exactly in the center of 
lens, which, which is point of intersection of lens and principal axis. Any ray going through the center of lens will go straight without bending. So I'm going to show how to draw ray diagrams using both convex lens and concave lens using the rules. Let's say for convex lens, convex lens, the so principal axis, lens, two focal points, same distance from lens. Distance between the focal point and lens is called focal length. And this is object. So we're going to use all rules, all three rules, to locate image of object. First ray goes parallel to the principal axis. And after reaching the lens, it goes through focal point. Goes through focal point. And second ray goes through focal point. After reaching the lens, it goes parallel to the principal axis. And the last ray goes through center of lens and it doesn't bend. And at point of intersection we have image. This is our object and this is our image. And we have special notation here. So the, again this distance is called focal length and this small f point is capital F distance is small f distance between the lens and object is is denoted by u and distance between between the lens and between the lens and image is v another example i'm going to use concave lens to locate image So what happens if you have concave lens and what kind of image we get? Principal axis, focal point from both sides. So let's say our object is here. Okay, here, object. So we have three rays again. First ray going parallel. But since it's diverging lens, ah, sorry, I'm going to use red for rays, red color. So if ray is going parallel to principal axis, since it's diverging lens, how we determine at with which direction it's going to diverge? It's determined by focal point. So we draw dotted line. We draw dotted line because it's not actual ray, but it's just extension of ray. And ray itself. And whichever ray going through the center goes without bending and actually we have point of intersection here and we get image we get image here so uh, i'm going to consider some special situations using the convex lens so u is distance between the object and lens f is focal lens and this says what, what kind of image we get we get when distance between object and lens is twice more than twice of double focal lens. So this is convex lens and this is distance of this is focal point and this distance is 1f and this distance is double f. So condition is u must be bigger than 2f. For example, object is here. Object is here. So we draw at least two or three rays to locate image. First ray parallel to principal axis, parallel to principal axis, and goes through focal point. Second ray goes through focal point 
and through parallel to the principal axis. And last ray goes through the center. At the point of intersection, at the point of intersection, we get image. And if you compare the sizes of images, this is bigger than this, and we say it all. Actually, we represent images by three characteristics, and I'm going to use the same terminology later. Image can be, image can be real or virtual. Real image can be magnified, shrunk, or diminished, or shrunk and diminished, they are just synonymous, or same size, same size. Image can be also upright or inverted. Every time when we draw image, when we draw ray diagrams, we need to pick one word from each line. For example, image can be real, shrunk, inverted. Image can be virtual, magnified, upright, for example. How about this case? Here we have, if you compare, so how to distinguish between real and virtual? Real images, they, they obtained from, they obtained from the intersection of rays itself. But in, we just seen that if we cannot locate image, we cannot locate image by rays itself, but the extension of rays, this kind of image is called virtual images. So this is a virtual image. If rays intersect themselves, we get real image, real virtual image. And how can we identify whether an image is magnified, shrunk, or same size? We just compare sizes of object and image so, in this example, object seems to be higher or taller than the image, therefore, it's shrunk image. So, let's write characteristics of image. This is real, shrunk, this is real, shrunk, and is it inverted or upright? So, if upright, the arrow should be pointing the same direction, but since it's upright was going looking upwards and it's pointing downwards, so that's why it's inverted. Inverted. Let's consider a few more examples. Another case is when in an object is between focal length and double focal length. Principal axis, convex lens, focal point, focal point, and this is double focal point. And condition is distance between object and lens must be between F and double F. So object is here. Let's draw right rays to, to locate image. First ray parallel to principal axis. Then it goes through focal point. Second ray is, goes through focal point and parallel to principal axis. And last ray goes through center, and it doesn't bend. At point, of at point of intersection, we get image. So, let's, let's uh, list characteristics of image. So, is it real or virtual? Is it magnified, shrunk, or same size? Is it upright or inverted? We need to re represent image by one word per line. So, is it real or virtual? It's real because it's, it's located where rays intersect themselves. This is a real image. Is it magnified, shrunk, or same size? If we compare sizes, it seems it's magnified. It's, it's longer than the image, is longer than object. It's magnified. Is it upright or inverted? So, 
object is pointing upwards, image is pointing downwards. It's inverted. Inverted. Let's consider a few more. If, what if object distance is less than focal point? Principal axis, convex lens, this is focal point, and they say distance between object and lens is less than focal lens. So object is located here. So let's draw rays. First ray goes, oh, I forgot to show the second focal point. First ray goes parallel to principal axis and it goes through focal point. Second ray, so in this case we cannot we cannot draw this way because it go doesn't go to lens. That therefore, what we do, we just draw these dotted lines from focal point to the tip of object, and ray is going to go this way. As long as it reaches the level of lens, it goes parallel to principal axis. And the last ray goes through the center without bending. So we can see that these rays never intersect because they're diverging. Therefore we draw extensions, virtual rays. At the point of intersection of these rays we get image. We get image. So let's Let's uh, write characteristics of image. Is it real or virtual? It's virtual because it, these rays don't intersect and we get their image from virtual rays. This is virtual image. Is it magnified or shrunk? So if you compare object and image, it seems it's magnified. We can see it. Is it upright or inverted? So object is pointing upwards, image is also pointing upwards, so it's upright. It's upright. Next example. What will happen if object is located at a point where, but focal point? Focal point. Principal axis, our lens, convex lens two focal points, same distance. So they say this Im object distance is same as focal length. Object is, object is located on focal point. So rays, so I'm, going, I'm using red for rays, red color. First ray goes parallel to principal axis, then through focal point. And, okay, we cannot draw ray this way because it doesn't go through lens, that's in no sense. If you draw this way, also, so it doesn't reach a lens, therefore it's nonsense, it's not necessary. Second ray is going to pass through the center. So if you, if you draw it properly, you can notice that these two rays are parallel and even if you draw in opposite direction, they don't intersect. Therefore, therefore, we say that image at infinity. Image at infinity. So, is it real or virtual? Okay, well, we call it it's accepted to be called as virtual. Virtual. Is it magnified or shrunk? It's magnified. So because I'm I'm telling this because we we assume that the image will be formed here. Therefore, if object height is this, so it will be larger than object. That's why it's magnified. 
magnified and upright. Upright. And last example of special cases. What happens if object at infinity? Well, where we can see it, for example, when we look at the distant stars using telescopes. And distance between star and telescope is very large, then we can say, okay, it's close to infinity. What happens here? Rays come, for example, they, since they're very far, because since objects very far from lens, they come parallel. So these two rays can help us to locate image. So first ray, for example, going through the center, it doesn't bend and it goes straight. Second ray going through focal point, as, as, as soon as it reaches the lens, it will bend so that it goes parallel to principal axis. At point of intersection, at point of intersection, actually point of intersection will be at focal point. We get image. And what kind of image is this? Is it real or virtual? It's real because the intersection of rays itself, themselves. Real. Is it magnified or shrunk? Well, it seems it's shrunk. Is it upright or inverted? It's inverted. So far we have looked at the image formation when rays are parallel to lens. But there are some cases when rays are not parallel. And how do we draw ray diagrams in this case? For example, if we have convex lens, principal axis and convex lens, if, if rays not parallel, I mean, not perpendicular to lens and not parallel to principal axis. For example, rays coming this way, parallel. So how do we draw, how do we draw the path of rays? In this case, we use focal point, we use focal point, and plane which intersects focal point and which is also parallel to lens is called focal plane. Focal plane. And we draw, we draw additional axis, additional axis, so that the axis is parallel to this rays and it goes through the center. Let me, let, let, I'll, I'll try to draw it accurate. At the point of intersection of this axis, secondary axis, and focal plane, we get secondary focal point. Let's say it's F prime. And this point will be point where rays will converge. So rays are going to take this path, this way. Another example, using concave lens or diverging lens. Principal axis to focal points. If rays, for example, let's say coming this way, this way. So how do we draw diagram here? Again, we look at this focal point, and this is our focal plane. We draw another line, another axis, which is which goes through the center and parallel to this rays. And we use this point as a secondary focal point. And we draw all, 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 all rays using this focal point. 
So going from this point, and this ray goes this, uh, in this direction, this ray goes in this direction, but still, you can see it's still diverging, just changes the direction depending on direction of incident beam of rays. This ray goes in this direction, this ray goes in this direction. In this video, we looked at the, some experiments, some demonstrations using lenses, what, what happens when rays incident on converging lens, rays incident on diverging lens, and we looked at the theory behind it that explains why that happens. I hope that you enjoyed learning about lenses and you can apply knowledge in your future physics classes. Thank you for your attention.